Hello, I'm in the courtyard of uh, the uh, Foxhorseschule in Bielefeld. It's uh, a uh, old industrial site, and um, behind you can see the main entrance. Uh, it's uh, that's where the steam engine was in the old days. But uh, anyway, so this is the uh, courtyard, and um, I was just I've just been reading a book. Um, I tend to read books late at night in the and in the. Um, I'm on the toilet actually, but that's a, a different matter. And I'm reading at the moment The Gangs of New York by Herbert uh, Asprey. And it's very interesting because it's, it's got a history of all sorts of bits and pieces. And it's all, they're all episodic stories, which is why I, because uh, I can fall asleep and it doesn't matter if I've uh, forgotten something, go back a few pages. So, but this what the story that was interesting to me was the uh, story of uh, um, a brothel Christian and had taken over, uh, but it had been taken over as a church and a place where worship would take place. And uh, got, a, got quite a bit of interest, and uh, the newspapers were interested in these and things. It was um, uh, one of these things where you think, oh, right, so he has had a conversion. Um, he, his family was well to do, and he trained as a uh, as a as a priest, so he, he actually had some background, so it wasn't too unexpected, but it turned out, turned out because the New York Times did the research, they found out that he'd been paid by some local evangelical preachers to pretend to have been converted, and they rented his rooms for so much money. And it was also pointed out that the people who attended the services of, that were held there weren't the people who were the prostitutes and the uh, ruffians and people like that. It was very much the uh, uh, the uh, the middle classes and the uh, people who were interested, people who were already Christians. And this is actually something you notice in evangelical Christianity. It's one of these areas where they have a revival and it's sort of fake, it's sort of artificial. They, uh, they, they gasp, grasp numbers, they claim things, and it turns out to be false. This has been going on for the 250 years that evangelical Christianity has been around. It's a, it comes in the, in the 18th century, and uh, they've been having revivals ever since. And it's just interesting that I'm reading a book that's completely unrelated. It's about gangs and, and ruffians in New York in the 19th century. And it turns out the evangelicals are in there pretending to convert them, pretending to do that. Of course, as soon as the newspapers uh, made the, uh, 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 the story, it was uh, um, people realised it was a load of rubbish. And guess what? It all collapsed. So that's sort of the thing that I've been noticing. Because I've been reading several other books about the 19th century, because I, mean, I, I think it's interesting because it informs our time. It's now over 100 years since the 19th century ended, so, um, but it's something that forms a lot of our opinions. I was just interested that this, um, a little vignette of uh, uh, social history going on here in uh, New York in the 1860s, uh, this pretend um, revival, and they've been doing it ever since, and they carry on doing it.